Okay, in this video we're going to work with a text file or a table of coordinates and create a series of points based on those coordinates. So we're going to be using Dr. Stapleton's um, sampling locations to do this. And what he gave us was originally a, uh, a common delimited file. And so what I want to do is we're going to look at, again, our ARC environment here. I'm going to click on my add data. Most of you should be familiar with that. We're already connected here. You'll notice, by the way, that this is our default geodatabase. You'll notice it has that little house on it. Um, and I'm going to do this two ways. You'll notice in an earlier clip that we imported the CSV file into our geodatabase. And so I'm going to show you that we can do this with both of these. Uh, it, it works either way. So the first thing I'm going to do is add first the CSV file. And then normally what I would do, if someone gives me a, a GPS file, um, I'm going to look at the data and make sure that everything's okay. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to open up Dr. Stapleton's table. And you'll notice that it has a, a series of fields, site, long, and lat. And I look at them and I want to make sure that everything's correct. Again, we're in North America, so my longitudes should be negative. Uh, my latitudes are positive. Now I happen to have talked to him and I know that this data was collected in WGS84. So I can uh, add the data and be fairly confident about my uh, datum. Okay, so that's the next step. Now I want to show you, however, that I could have also added the data from the table that I had imported earlier. And so this is a geodatabase table. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to add that one here. Now you'll notice in the table of contents, they look a little bit different. Um, what you'll notice is that the sample locations that are the CSV file simply have a file folder above them, whereas my geodatabase table has the geodatabase icon above it. So I'm going to work first with the CSV file. And again, relatively straightforward, I'm going to right click on it. And you'll notice the option here is display XY data. So I'm going to click on that. And uh, it, by default, it looks for um, strings. You'll notice that the X field, again, that's the kind of the horizontal field, if you will, uh, is longitude. Our Y field is latitude. There is no Z field in this case. And you'll notice that the, the coordinate system of inputs is unknown. At least that's what it says right now. So what I need to do is edit that. So I'm going to click on Edit. And because it's WGS84, we know that that's geographic coordinates. I'm going to expand that one. And WGS is a world datum. And so I'm going to scroll all the way down. And you're going to notice that at the bottom there's WGS84. And I'm going to click OK. And again, I'm going to click OK. Now you'll notice that because this is a CSV file, it doesn't have an object ID. And so you get a little warning like this. And I'm going to click OK. And there are our coordinates. And you'll notice already, um, and if you would look back in the video, you would have seen this was unknown units, that we now have decimal degrees in terms of our units at the bottom of the map. The other thing that you should note is that our data frame because this was the first set of data added with a defined coordinate system, that it defines the coordinate system for the data frame. And that's an important thing to remember. So, OK, I'm going to click OK there. And we now have a set of what we call event. This is what we call an event theme. That is, it is not really a feature class, nor is it a shapefile. It is simply a visualization of tabular data. So once you're working with this, the next step is to right click on this and then you're going to import, or I'm sorry, you're going to export the data. This is essentially a way of making it permanent. I'm going to click on export data. And again, you'll notice that it defaults to my working directory. And that's where I actually want this one to be. And I'm going to call this one sampling locations WGS. 84, and I'm going to put CSV because I just want to know that this is where it came from. And I'm going to click Save. Now I'm going to click OK. Now you'll notice that in this case, the layer's source data is what's being used in terms of its coordinate system. If I wanted to get this into a different coordinate system that the data frame happened to be in, I could also use the data frame's properties. But right now I'm going to use the source data because it's defined and I'm going to click OK. 
It's going to process this. It's going to ask if I want to add it. And I'm going to click yes. Now you'll notice that they exist exactly in the same place as they did before. Everything looks great. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm simply going to remove that CSV grouping of files. And I can do that by clicking on the actual folder that contains it. Now I'm going to do it again using the GeoDatabase. And I want you to note a couple of things. So again, I'm going to click on the same tool, right click on the table, display X and Y data. And again, in this case, it defaults to that of the data frame. In this case, latitude, longitude and latitude are defined. The description, the description of the coordinate system is correct, GCS, WGS 84. And I'm going to click OK. Now, the important thing that I want you to note is that when that occurred, you notice that it did not say that it doesn't have an object ID. It does because I moved the table into the GeoDatabase first. Um, I do want to still, because they are, these are events, they don't, uh, they don't persist. I'm going to export these again. And again, what I simply want to do is I'm going to name these the same thing sampling in fact I'm going to kind of copy this but I'm going to change the end of it to geo table okay and save and there we go we now have our other points now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get rid of the event themes again and so now we have two sets of data points and we have made them from a table or a geodatabase table. Um, now, in the next video, I'm going to show you how this would be uh, documented in uh, Model Builder. We'll see you next time.